How often do you find a great piece of furniture at a thrift store or an estate sale, but it's in horrible condition? The good thing about this is that these pieces are usually pretty cheap, and if you know how to refinish furniture and you have the right tools, you can make a pretty decent profit flipping the items, or you can just have a fabulous apartment without spending a lot of money. I learned all about furniture refinishing from my dad, who used to sell antiques as a hobby for about 30 years. And in this video, we're working on stripping and refinishing four vintage end tables I found at a couple of thrift stores. So break out your notepads and you'll learn how to do this for yourself. First, your supply list. Now this is kind of a long list of supplies, but believe me, you're gonna need pretty much all of these things to be able to do the job right. So do yourself a favor and get all this stuff together before you start. Chemical stripper, polyurethane varnish, a nice paintbrush and an old one, old rags and towels, 60 and 100 grit sandpaper, quadruple zero steel wool, rubber gloves, cloth garden gloves, stir sticks, a vacuum if you have one, tack cloth, paper filters, sponge brushes, putty knives, a dental pick or something similar, empty coffee cans, a bucket for soap and water, dish soap, mineral spirits, a scrub brush, tarps and old blankets, plastic baggies, a clamp light, wood stain, and wood glue, clamps, and your regular tool kit. Cover your workspace with tarp and old blankets, and you'll also want to dress really ugly because you'll probably be permanently ruining the clothes you're wearing. Remove all the hardware from your piece, like handles and screws, and break down the piece as much as possible. So take apart the legs, the chair backs. If it comes apart without coming unglued, take it apart. Put all your hardware together in a plastic bag so you don't lose it. You can also mark all the ends of the pieces you remove so you know how to put the furniture back together at the very end. Last, put on your rubber gloves and your cloth gloves. You want to double up the protection on your hands because the stripping chemical is harsh and dangerous. If you feel any sort of itching or burning sensation on your skin, tend to it immediately. You don't want stripper to start eating away at your flesh, so keep a bucket of soap and water handy to wash away any incidents. Oh, and don't forget to take a before picture before starting. Pour your stripper into an old Tupperware container and use your old gross brush to slather stripper on your piece. Start with the underside and work up. Also, it helps to start with one side of the piece and move clockwise so you can be sure to hit all surfaces. Stripping is not like painting or varnishing. When applying stripper, you're simply glopping the substance onto the surface. It should look gooey and wet. Resist the urge to paint the stripper into the wood. Let a surface amount fester on top. Let the stripper eat away at the surface of the piece for 15 to 20 minutes. Then use your putty knife to remove the excess gunk. The gunk is a combination of the stripper chemical and the old finish. Scrape it into your empty coffee can. Get as much of the gunk off the piece as you're able to. Look for any dark spots you may have missed with the original application of stripper and repeat this combination of applying stripper, waiting, then scraping until most of the old finish has been removed. This is sort of like you're in a really sloppy stage. So, and this is the place where most people quit. They say, I can't do this. And now you're at the point where you just have to have you know, patience. Use your five gallon bucket which is filled with warm soapy water and use the scrub brush to remove the excess stripper from the surfaces of your piece. Don't oversaturate the piece with water, but it's okay to get it a little wet. Use one of your old rags or towels to dry the piece as much as possible. Once you've scrubbed away the excess stripper, you should let your piece get completely dry and then use 60 grit sandpaper to sand the whole thing down. Start with any problem areas on the wood like burn marks or water stains or anything else that remains on the wood after the stripping process. And then just move on to areas where the old finish is still clinging to the wood. What you need to do here is make sure that all of those pieces get removed from the wood because anything that doesn't is going to show up under your coat of varnish and make the whole thing look like crap. Get it done right so that you're not kicking yourself at the end of this whole process. Everything should be smooth with no marks on it when you're finished. 
This is the stage where you want to make any necessary repairs. Wobbly legs can be stabilized with wood glue. Cracked wood can be glued and clamped together, and veneer can be touched up. This is the time to fix whatever is wrong with the piece and let it dry before proceeding. Now your piece is stripped, dry, and cleaned, and it's probably looking very dull and gray. So you might conclude that staining is the next logical step, but you don't always have to stain a piece. In fact, if you can avoid staining, you should. Lots of pieces look great with just a coat of varnish. To see how the piece would look with a coat of varnish, wet a rag in your bucket of soap and water and apply the water to the wood surface. The wet wood should give you a fairly accurate picture of what the piece will look like with a coat of varnish. Varnish will bring out the natural beauty in your wood. If you do decide to stain, use a sponge brush to apply stain to the surfaces. Let the stain soak in and then remove excess stain with a rag. Wipe the piece down and let it dry. Remember, staining is not like painting or varnishing. It's more like oiling your piece. If you have a vacuum with a brush attachment, use it to vacuum up the sawdust left behind by sanding. Otherwise, just use a dust cloth. Get as much of the dust and debris off as you can and shake out blankets and vacuum or sweep your work area as well. Then give your whole piece a once over with your tack cloth, which will remove additional dirt and debris. Make sure your piece is impeccably clean. No stray hairs, no dust, no pollen. Don't work in a windy or wet area. If you're outside, protect your piece from stray debris in the air as much as you can. Stir the varnish in the can, and then make sure there are no lumps or glops before filtering it through the paper strainer and into a clean receptacle. Use a nice, clean paintbrush to apply a smooth, clear coat of varnish to all your surfaces. It helps to start with the legs and underside and work your way around. The goal when varnishing is to smoothly cover all surfaces, avoiding runs, drips, and bubbles. Definitely avoid getting any outside debris in the wet coat of varnish. Use your clamp light to view the varnish at different angles to check for missing dry spots, any stray hairs, drips, runs, or bubbles, and fix these with your brush immediately. Varnish dries fairly quickly, so you'll have to work quickly at this stage. It sometimes helps to work with a partner who can hold your light and check your work. When you're sure everything is as good as it gets, let the first coat dry. This is where your piece should start looking really great, and you feel great too, because you're almost done. Use your quadruple zero steel wool to smooth the freshly varnished surface. Then use the tack cloth again to remove excess debris. Now apply the second coat of varnish just as you did the first coat, only you have to work even faster this time because the second coat dries even more quickly. After your second coat dries, use the steel wool to finish off the surfaces and do a final touch up with the tack cloth. Polish up any metal pieces on the furniture including knobs and legs and put your furniture back together. Clean up your work area and make sure to clean off all your fancy brushes. Let your freshly varnished piece dry overnight and then don't forget to take a great after photo.